Welcome uh, to the new chapter, chapter 13, Gas Mixers, and this is lecture number 12. Now, uh, first of all, let's discuss the objective of this chapter. This chapter is based on analyzing the non-reacting gas mixture. Basically, we have two types of the mixture. One we call the reacting mixture and another one called the non-reacting gas mixture. For example, if there is a mixture of the ammonia gas and carbon dioxide, if they mix together, they will immediately react with each other. So that's called the non-reacting mixture. But this chapter deals with the non-reacting mixture. For example, our atmospheric air is a mixture of different gases like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, and water vapors. They don't Although they are a gas mixture, but they don't react with each other. I mean, we can uh, physically separate oxygen, nitrogen by using liquefaction of the gases. So we call them the non-reacting gas mixture. Now, so there are numerous examples for the non-reacting mixture. For example, carbon di if the carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas, they are mixed together, they will not react with each other. Similarly, we have many other examples of the non-reacting gas mixture. So this chapter is based on the non-reacting gas mixture. So first of all, the objective is to calculate the composition of the gas mixture. So let's say if we know the composition of the individual gas component, how to get the composition of the mixture from the knowledge of the composition of the individual component. So that would be the first objective to figure out the composition of the gas mixture. And then the second objective would be to predict the pressure, volume, and temperature behavior of the gas mixture. So that means, let's say, if we know the temperature of the individual gas, volume of the individual gas, pressure of the individual gas, and let's say we have different gases, and if they mix together, then what will be the pressure, volume, temperature of, the, of that gas mixture? So that would be the second objective, right? And the third objective will be to figure out the properties of the mixture. I mean, properties mean, let's say, internal energy, enthalpy, right, entropy. So we know how to calculate the internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy of individual component. For example, the previous chapter was related chapter number 12, thermodynamic property relation. That was based on how to calculate the properties of the individual component, whether that is an ideal or real gas. Now, if the gases are in a mixture, then how to calculate the properties of the mixture? So that will be the third objective of this chapter. So basically, if we summarize, this chapter is based on how to, how to analyze the composition, how to analyze the pressure, volume, temperature, how to analyze the properties of a gas mixture. And the, that gas mixture is non-reacting gas mixture, right? So let's start with the first objective to analyze the composition of a gas mixture. So why we need the composition of the gas mixture? Basically, we cannot calculate the properties of the mixture. For example, properties mean pressure, volume, temperature of the mixture until we know the composition of the mixture. So to get the properties of the mixture, first of all, we should know the composition of the mixture. So that's why we need to know the composition of the mixture. The composition of the mixture can be analyzed by three different ways. It can be based on the molar analysis. Molar analysis means based on the number of moles. And gravimetric analysis means based on the mass of the individual component. And it can be based on the volume, which is called the volumetric analysis, and the volume of the individual component. Mainly, uh, gas mixtures, they are specified based on either the molar base or based on the gravimetric analysis. To understand this, for example, if we have two non-reacting gases, let's say hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen has a mass of 6 kg, whereas oxygen has a mass of 32 kg. If the two gases they are mixed together, now it becomes a gas mixture, so this is a gas mixture, then the mass of the gas mixture will be equal to the sum of the masses of the two components, I mean, mass of the hydrogen plus the mass of the oxygen. So the mass of the mixture, this is the mass of the mixture, that is the sum, which is 32 plus 6, that is 38 kg. 
So the mass of a mixture is equal to the sum of the masses of its components. So this is based on the gravimetric analysis, based on the mass of each component. It can be based on the molar analysis. For example, let's say hydrogen has a mole of three kilomole, or oxygen has one kilomole. Then if they're mixed in the mixture, if they're mixed, then what's the number of moles of the mixture? Again, we have to add up. I mean, sum of all the individual components that will give you the number of moles of the mixture. So the number of moles of the non-reactive mixture is equal to the sum of the number of moles of its component. So in general, in general, we can write down that the mass of the mixture, M represent for the mixture, I represent for the individual component. So the mass of the mixture is the sum of the masses of the individual component, whereas the number of moles of the mixture is equal to sum of the moles of the individual component, just like we did in this example and in, the, in this example. I mean, the mass of the mixture is the sum of the masses of all the components. Similarly, number of moles of the mixture is equal to number of sum of the number of moles of individual component. So based on this knowledge, we can also calculate mass fraction of individual component. Let's say if we want to calculate the uh, mass fraction of the oxygen. What will be the mass fraction of the oxygen? Mass of the oxygen divided by the mass of the mixture. So mass of the individual component, so mass of the mixture. I mean individual component. Individual component, let's say oxygen, then we have to use the oxygen and this is mass of the mixture. So let's say mass fraction of the uh, hydrogen, then mass of the hydrogen divided by mass of the mixture. So similarly, you can also have mole fraction. And that's what the mass fraction. Now we can have the mole fraction. So similarly, mole fraction of the individual component is the ratio of the number of moles of the individual component to the num number of moles of the mixture. So this is how we can get mass fraction and mole fraction. Right? And then please note that sum of mass fraction of all the component is equal to 1. Similarly, sum of all the mole fraction of all the component is also equal to 1. For example, in previous example, we had two components, hydrogen and oxygen, and the mole fraction of the hydrogen is equal to 0 0.75 and the mole fraction of oxygen is 0 0.25. So if we add up all the mole fraction, that should be equal to 1. So it says that sum of the mole fraction of all the component is equal to 1. So how to get the molar mass of the mixture because we know I mean, molar mass means the capital M. We know let's say for the nitrogen, that's the individual component. Let's say that's the individual component. We know the molar mass of the nitrogen, which is about I think 28. And similarly for oxygen, we know the molar mass of the oxygen is a 32, right? We already know that. Now let's say 32 for the oxygen. So let's say if the nitrogen and oxygen they are mixed together. So how then how to get the molar mass of the mixture? And the molar mass of the mixture is again equal to the mass of the mixture divided by total number of moles of the mixture. So this is the total mass of the mixture divided by total number of moles of the mixture. It can also further simplify. For example, mass of the mixture is a sum of masses of the individual component or Mi can be written as Ni times Mi, whereas this ratio Ni divided by Mi, that's equal to the mole fraction. So mole fraction times Mi. So this, that's basically can also be represented as the product of the mole fraction and the molar mass of individual components. So in previous example, let's say we had two component, oxygen and hydrogen, then Y oxygen, M oxygen, plus Y hydrogen, times M hydrogen. So that will give you the molar mass of the mixture because we know mass is equal to N times the molar mass. So here we apply that formula because M is equal to N times the molar mass. How to get the gas constant of the mixture? Now the gas constant of the mixture Rn is equal to universal gas constant divided by molar mass of the mixture. Because let's say if we want to calculate the let's say gas constant for the nitrogen, let's say R nitrogen. How we get that? R nitrogen that will be equal to the universal gas constant R U divided by 
the molar mass of the nitrogen right m nitrogen you can get that molar mass for the nitrogen so similarly similarly for the mixture so similarly for the mixture rm will be the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass for the mixture uh, sometimes uh, although we have this relationship I mean, the molar mass for the mixture is equal to the sum of yi mi sometimes the mass fraction is given so we also have certain relationship how to get the molar mass of the mixture in terms of the mass fraction how can we get that i mean we have to simplify that for example mm is the ratio of the mm divided by nm whereas nm is further sum of all the mi divided by mi whereas if we take this one down here then this mi divided by mi is the mass fraction so that's mass fraction divided by mi so we, we have the both relationship of mm in terms of mass fraction and this relationship is in terms of mole fraction and then what's the relationship between the mass fraction and the mole fraction what's the relationship between the two the mass fraction of individual component is basically the mass of that component divided by the mass of the mixture whereas mi is ni mi whereas mm is equal to nm mm whereas this ratio ni divided by mi is mole fraction so mole fraction times this ratio so this is the relation between the mass fraction and mole fraction so just to summarize up till now we discuss how to evaluate the composition of a gas mixture so composition mean how to get the mass of a mixture which is the sum of the mass of the individual component and then how to get the number of mole of the mixture that's the sum of the mole of the individual component and then how to get the molar mass of the mixture how to get the gas constant for the mixture and then what's the relationship between the mass fraction and the mole fraction now the next objective is how to get the pressure volume and temperature of a mixture and the mixture can be treated as an ideal gas mixture or the real gas mixture we have the two options we can also treat the gas mixture as an ideal gas mixture or we can assume a real gas mixture so basically there are two important law that governs the pvt behavior of the gases especially the real gases one of the law which is known as a dalton's law of additive pressure which says that the pressure of a mixture is the sum of the pressure of the individual component provided they exist at the same temperature and volume so that's called that's very famous law i think you already familiar with that dalton's law of it is also called a dalton's law of partial pressure sometimes sometimes it is, it is written as a dalton's law of additive pressure for example if we have two gases let's say gas a gas a, a has a pressure of p a and gas b has a pressure of p b then what will be the pressure of the gas mixture that will be the sum of p a plus p b so the total pressure of the mixture is the sum of the pressure of the individual component but what's the condition condition is if they exist at same temperature and volume if they exist at same temperature and pressure as the volume of the mixture and the temperature of the mixture then we can apply this law that the total pressure will be equal to the sum of the partial pressure of the individual component i mean pa plus pb will give you the pre pressure of the mixture but that's when the individual component they exist at same temperature and at same pressure so that's called the dalton's law of additive pressure for a mixture of two ideal gases so basically these two and second second law you are so familiar with that that's called the emigers law of additive volume it says that the volume of volume of the gas mixture let's say again if we have two gases let's say gas a and gas b then if they are mixed together then we we'll get a gas mixture then the volume of the gas mixture is the sum of the volume of the individual component and the volume of the mixture but provided if each gas would occupy if it existed alone at the mixture temperature and pressure i mean 
their pressure and temperature the pressure and temperature is the same as the gas mixture then the volume of the mixture will be equal to the sum of the volume of the individual components so that's called the emigrates law of additive volume right for example to understand this let's say we take an example of the our atmospheric air our atmospheric air is basically composed of nitrogen oxygen argon and some other traces so we know that contains 78% by mole nitrogen 28% by mole uh, oxygen and 78% nitrogen 0.9% by mole argon and some other gases now that means uh, the total air total air i mean we, we know that the total atmospheric pressure is equal to one atmospheric pressure so total atmospheric pressure is basically the sum of the partial pressure of these three components the pressure of the nitrogen plus pressure of the oxygen plus pressure of the argon if you add up three pressure then you will get one atmospheric pressure so how to get let's say the what is the partial pressure of oxygen we can get the partial pressure of any of the component by multiplying its mole fraction with the total pressure for example total pressure is one atmospheric right so if we multiply the mole fraction of the oxygen that's a, which is 0.21 0.21 then you will get the partial pressure of oxygen so that means that's 0.21 atmospheric similarly if you multiply the mole fraction of the nitrogen which is 0.78 then you will get the mole fraction of partial pressure of the nitrogen similarly partial pressure of the argon so you so you add the three pressure then you get one atmospheric pressure so why we apply the dalton's law because dalton law says the sum of the individual pressure is equal to the pressure of the mixture provided if they exist at same volume and same pressure i mean in atmospheric the nitrogen gas temperature is same as the oxygen and the argon temperature is same as the and also the mixture temperature is same as the individual component i mean in our atmosphere if you measure the temperature of individual gas or the whole mixture you will get the same temperature similarly in a room let's say you consider in a room whatever is the volume of the oxygen that's same as the volume of nitrogen that's same as the volume of the nitrogen so that's why we can apply the dalton's law so similarly we can apply the emigrates law now if we summarize i mean the pressure of the mixture is the sum of the pressure of the individual component if they exist at the temperature of the mixture and the volume of the mixture that was the dalton's law similarly the emigrates law the volume of the mixture is the sum of the volume of the individual component if they exist at the mixture temperature and at mixture pressure now these two law they are very accurately applied for the ideal gas i mean they give you the exact exact result for the ideal gases however they give you approximate result for the real gases i mean for ideal gases they are very perfect to apply but when you consider real gases they will give you approximate results not accurate result you can approximate but not you cannot get accurate results now we, we also have the uh, pressure fraction pressure fraction means the ratio of the individual component pressure to the pressure of the mixture that's called the pressure fraction similarly we have the volume fraction ratio of the individual volume component to the volume of the mixture that's called the volume fraction so for ideal gases dalton's and emigrates law they are identical i mean they will give you the same results right and they, they, they are identical and they will give you the same results for example let's see if we have a mixture of oxygen let's say mixture of oxygen and uh, nitrogen they let's say the mixture is at pressure of 100 kPa 400 kelvin temperature and the mixture volume is 1 cubic meter now if they separate let's say if they separate then you will see that the the volume is the sum of the individual volume provided if they have same temperature as the mixture temperature if they have the same pressure as the mixture temperature then the sum of the volume is equal to the 
volume of the mixture. So that's called the Amagat's law. Right. Okay. Now the ideal gas mixture, I mean how to get the pressure, volume and the temperature of an ideal gas mixture. Now uh, you can see here, I mean this is the ratio of the uh, Pi to the Pm, individual pressure to the mixture pressure. That's, I mean, if we put Pi, mean Ni Ru, I mean the ideal gas equation, if we put that, that will be Ni Ru Tm and Vm because individual component have the same temperature and pressure as the mixture one. So similarly, if we put the value of Pm, then that means Tm, Vm will be canceled out right and similarly r u will be cancelled out so the meaning will be n i divided by n i which is equal to the mole fraction so similarly let's say the ratio of the volume individual volume to the um, uh, mixer volume again if you put the value of the v i by using the ideal gas equation now in this case it will have it should have the same temperature and the same pressure as the mixture so tm divided by pm so again here it will be cancelled out Right, so we'll get the same volume fraction. So that means both will give you the volume fraction, right? So whether Pi divided by Pm or Vi divided by Vm. So that indicates that this ratio, whether the pressure fraction or the volume fraction, both are equal to the mole fraction, right? So that's why they will give you the identical results. So that's how both are equally applicable for the ideal gases right now the next question is uh, the uh, i mean the um, amagat's law and the dalton's law they are very accurate for the ideal behavior but they are approximate for the real gas mixture so how to how to analyze the pvt behavior of a real gas mixture then we have another law we, we, we apply the compressibility factor because we know to, to analyze the uh, real gas behavior we, should, we apply for the compressibility factor. I mean this is PV is equal to ZNRUT. So here we have the compressibility factor. So how to get the compressibility factor for the mixture? I mean this, this formula is for the individual component. Let's say it's a nitrogen. So we'll put P nitrogen, V nitrogen, Z nitrogen, N nitrogen, T nitrogen. So what about if we want to apply the equation, that equation for the real gases, then we should have that ZM for the mixture as well. So how to get the value of the ZM for the mixture? So that can be calculated ZM as the sum of the product of VI, ZI, right? I mean, then if you put this value and you get the pressure of the mixture, we call the Dalton's law, right? So the, this will give you some more accurate results if you introduce a compressibility factor, ZM. So ZM based on the Dalton's law, how we can calculate? We can calculate ZM by sum of the VI, ZI. Right. So this way, if you know Zm, then you can put this Zm here. So then you can get the value of Pm, which is the pressure of the mixture. But you should you should know the other component. I mean, the volume of the mixture, number of mole of the mixture, and temperature of the mixture. Then you can know the pressure of the mixture because Dalton's law is based on how to get the pressure of the mixture. So for that you should have Zm and how can you get Zm? Zm is the sum of v, Vi, Zi. Depends on how many components that mixture has. If it has two components, let's say nitrogen and oxygen, then Y nitrogen, Z nitrogen plus Y oxygen, Z oxygen. Depends on number of component. And then the second law which is used to figure out the real gas pressure, volume, temperature, we call the K's rule. So K, based on the K's rule, it assumes pseudo-pure substance. I mean, the mix, it assumes that that gas mixture, that gas mixture is a pseudo-pure substance. So for pseudo-pure substance, it says that first of all, calculate the critical pressure of the mixture, critical temperature of the mixture, and then 
based on the critical pressure of the mixture or critical temperature of the mixture then calculate the reduced temperature of the mixture then the reduced pressure of the mixture right and then from these two value calculate the zm for the mixture I mean zm for the mixture so that zm can be applied in that equation right so this is the main difference between the dalton's law and k's rule dalton's law give you a very simplified equation this equation i mean for calculating the zm it says that calculate the zm by simply sum of yi zi whereas k's rule says first calculate the critical pressure of the mixture critical temperature of the mixture then calculate the reduced temperature of the mixture reduced pressure of the mixture and then calculate zm so the only difference is the way you calculate zm this give you another way to calculate zm whereas this give you a different way to calculate zm and there is a slight i mean the result of the k's rule is accurate to within 10% over a wide range of temperature and pressure so k's rule is slightly accurate than the Uh, Dalton's law. However, Dalton's law also gave you some more accurate results if you introduce the compressibility factor. So this is how you can calculate the real gas uh, mixture properties: pressure, volume, and temperature. So you have the uh, Dalton's law and you have the K's rule. Now let's try to calculate one example, uh, and that will deal whatever we have learned up till now. Now. consider two insulated rigid tanks a and b and they are connected with a valve tank a of volume 1 cubic meter contains nitrogen at 40 degree c and 150 kPa whereas tank b contains 3 kg oxygen at 75 degree c and 300 kPa when the valve is opened the gases are allowed to mix right then determine the molar analysis of the mixture final temperature of the mixture and then final temperature of the mixture so that's the problem now that problem says that if you have two rigid and insulated tank let's say tank a that contains nitrogen and tank b contains oxygen and in between is a valve so if you open up the valve then obviously the both gases will mix and that will become a mixture of the nitrogen and oxygen right so based on that i mean we are give, we know the given data is we know the molar mass of the nitrogen molar mass of the oxygen and the volume of the nitrogen is given however we don't know the volume of the oxygen similarly the mass of the oxygen is given we don't know the mass of the nitrogen similarly the temperature of the nitrogen is 313 and the temperature of the oxygen is 348 kelvin pressure of the nitrogen is 150 pascal and pressure of the oxygen is 3 kilopascal and first part in first part it says perform the molar analysis of the mixture now the, we know that molar analysis mean what are the number of moles of individual component what is the what is their mole fraction and similarly for mixture what is the number of moles of the mixture so similarly what is the volume of the mixture what is the mass of the mixture so this is called the composition analysis in second part it says what is the temperature of the mixture similarly what is the pressure of the mixture so this is the these are the unknown so we can i mean for uh, the composition let's say for the number of moles we can apply the ideal gas equation we know that pv is equal to nrut so let's say in case of nitrogen we we don't know the number of moles of the nitrogen but we know the pressure pressure is given 150 the volume is given 1 cubic meter ru value is 8.38 i mean 8.314 and then the temperature is also given which is 313 so the only unknown is number of moles so if we put all the four non values we can get the number of moles of nitrogen so the number of moles of the nitrogen is equal to i mean if we apply this equation for the nitrogen pn2 vn2 and then we can get the number of moles of the nitrogen so the, that value will be equal to 0.0576 kilo moles right if you put all the value i mean four non value and there will be one unknown value then you will get number of moles of the nitrogen
whereas for oxygen we don't know i mean we are given uh, we, we don't know the mass of the nitrogen how to get the mass of the nitrogen mass of the nitrogen is equal to number of moles time molar mass so number of moles we just calculated so if you multiply with the molar mass of the nitrogen then you will get number of i mean the mass of the nitrogen gas whereas for the oxygen we are given the mass but we don't know the volume we don't know the volume and we don't know the number of moles so if we know the mass then we can apply this equation i mean mass because mass is given so pv is equal to mrt so what's the difference between the, the the upper one and the lower one in upper one we are given number of moles pv is equal to n r u t where r u is universal gas constant whereas r is gas constant so gas constant mean if we apply for the oxygen then we have to put the value of the gas constant for oxygen right so this is we can calculate with the i mean by dividing the universal gas constant with the molar mass of oxygen so that means we know for this equation for oxygen we know the pressure pressure is 300 kPa and the volume is unknown we know the mass mass is 3 kg or we can calculate i mean it is given actually 8.31 divided by 32 so that's r and what's the t for oxygen t for oxygen is 348 so then if you put all the value we can get the volume for the oxygen and then how to get the number of mole of the oxygen i mean same formula we can apply because we know the pressure we know the volume we just calculated volume we know r u we know the temperature for the oxygen so only unknown will be number of moles of oxygen so if you put all the four value then you can get number of moles of the oxygen now how to get the composition for the mixture now for example how to get the volume of the mixture we have to add up right if we just simply add up let's say first of all the number of moles of the mixture so you have to add up that will give you the number of moles of the mixture how to get the mole fraction mole fraction of the nitrogen i mean mole of the nitrogen divided by mole fraction of the mixture so that will give you the mole fraction how to get the mole fraction of the oxygen number of mole divided by the number of mole of the mixture that will give you the mole fraction of the uh, oxygen what about how to get the volume of the mixture so you have to simply add up sum of the volume similarly uh, how to get the mass of the mixture you have to add up the mass right what about the temperature how to get the temperature of the mixture and pressure of the mixture because uh, like dalton's law give you for the pressure amagard's law give you the volume of the mixture how to get the temperature of the mixture right how to get the temperature of the mixture think about this because we don't we don't have the pressure because uh, to apply this equation i mean we should have pressure pressure for the mixture volume for the mix mixture number of moles for the mixture and then you can calculate the temperature for the mixture but we don't we, although we have the volume but we don't have the pressure for the mixture so we cannot get the temperature for the mixture so in that case you can apply the energy balance energy balance says that q and one to mean before mixing i mean individual when they were individual component and two state mean when they were in mixture state so that's equal to the change of internal energy so there is since they are rigid and insulated so this is zero there is no work output because of the rigid tank so change in internal energy is equal to zero so basically u2 is equal to u1 u2 mean after mixing when they are in the mixture state when the valve is open and u1 is the internal energy of the individual component I mean, they were before the mixture, so basically they will have different temperature. At T2 state, I mean, this is the internal energy of the at state one. At state one, this is for the nitrogen. This is for the oxygen. So you have to add up. Right? When they were before the mixing and after the mixing, the temperature is now T2. Temperature is T2. Here, before the mixing, the temperature was T1. This is. T1. This is T1 for the nitrogen. This is T1 for the oxygen. But after mixing, that's the mixture temperature. 
So mixture temperature means same T2 mixture temperature. So we know all the other values like we know MN, CVN, right? We we know the CVN, right? And similarly, uh, we know CV oxygen. So if we put that value, I mean, uh, you simplify that, then you will get T2 equal to 63.6 degrees C. I mean, you, we assume that they have this, the CV is the same. I mean, CV, we, that's our assumption, let's say, CV is a constant, right? So CV is constant, that will be canceled out from here because that will be common, so that will be canceled out. And the other value we know, all the unknown value, the only unknown is T2, right? So if you put all the value, we'll get T2 equal to 63.6 degrees C. So the individual component has different temperature, but the mixture will have different temperature. Now, how to get the value of the pressure now? Pressure of the mixture. How to get the pressure of the mixture? Now we can apply this formula. PM, VM, right, is equal to NM, RU, TM. Because now we know temperature of the mixture. We know RU, universal gas constant. We know number of moles of the mixture. Now, we know volume of the mixture, the only unknown is Pn. So if you put that value, the mixture pressure will be equal to 223 kilopascal. Right, so that's the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, you can send me email, you can ask me on MS Dean. See you in the next class.